I'm Eddie Conway. Welcome to Rattling the Bars. Uh, just recently, the governor vetoed a bill that would allow 40,000 citizens of Maryland the right to vote. Uh, there's an effort now underway in Annapolis to override that veto. And so I have with me here today uh, Perry Hopkins, who is the organizer, the community organizer for Community United, and he's going to update us and tell us what the status and situation is with that bill. Uh, Perry, welcome. Hi. Um, well, as you, as you know, um, back in March, <coughs> this bill, it's called the Ex-Felon Voting Rights Bill, was introduced to the legislation. It was co It was sponsored by Senator John Con Carter Conway. It was brought before the legislator. It passed unanimously through the Senate and did receive some opposition in the House. It did pass the House. It passed the House by a score of 83 to 56. Mm -hmm. It has become really a Democratic versus Republican issue. And as you know, we have a Republican governor. Well, at the end of the session, Governor Hogan, our Republican governor, decided to go against the majority of the legislature, and he vetoed that bill, thereby disenfranchising, again, over 40,000 Marylanders. Well, the session is about to open next week, and this bill is up for override. It's going before the General Assembly. Right now, we need 85 votes to overturn the governor's veto. We currently have 84. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll go back a minute and exactly what does this bill do? Okay. It's called House Bill 980. Okay. That's felon voting rights bill. What it will do is it will allow any citizen in Maryland the immediate right to vote upon being released from incarceration. Currently the, the bill, currently the law states that you must finish parole and probation before being allowed to vote. It's discriminatory, especially against felons. You can vote with a misdemeanor, but you cannot vote until you complete your parole and probation as a felon. Even though you live in a community, even though you pay taxes, you face a lot of barriers coming home from prison. You have a great optimistic outlook. Returning to society means all of your rights, all of your civil rights as a citizen. The ability and the right to vote is a right of all citizens, not only in the state of Maryland, but in the United States. This bill, the law as it stands, also precludes you from voting in a national election, which means you can't vote for the president who runs the country. Recidivism is very important. The numbers state people coming home from prison that vote don't return back to a life of crime two to one. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, you know, one of the things, and because I spent some time myself in the prison system, an uh, overwhelming majority of the prison population are people of color, yes. perhaps as much as 75 percent. So does this directly impact the vote in the black community and, quote, unquote, the black community's support for the Democratic Party? Yeah, uh, you, you bring up a very good point. The numbers is actually about 65 percent okay, of the current Maryland, pop Maryland prison population happen to be people of color, hmm. African-American males. It's disproportionately, this law disproportionately disenfranchises a lot of African-American males from being able to vote. And females, too. And I females would, as well. Suppose. And females as well. Yes. I, will, I will say that this is not a mm. male, a black male issue. Mm -hmm. It's really not a, a black-white issue. But the facts are the facts. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we... I need, to, I need to say, we have a Republican governor who overturned the majority of Democrats. One of the, one of the things we, we're looking at, what we're doing right now in a grassroots effort, is we have five legislators, all mm -hmm. Democrats, mm -hmm. that didn't vote for the bill. Okay. Had everybody Democratic on the Democratic side voted, we wouldn't be sitting here having this interview today. Mm -hmm. They are uh, Mary Ann Lasanti from District 34A. Mm -hmm. Delegate Mark Chang uh, in Anne Arundel County, District 32. Delegate uh, Theodore Sophocles in 32. And Delegate Pamela uh, Bidel 
in Montgomery County, you have Delegate Charles Barkley. These five individuals, for some odd reason, have decided to cross party lines and not vote for this bill when it is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. it's a, the current bill is a, is a form of voter suppression. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that it's a myth that those 40,000 people in the state of Maryland who happen to disproportionately be black will most likely pledge Democrat. So therefore, the Republicans definitely stand against it. For it's the right thing to do. We're mm -hmm. in the communities. We work, we pay taxes. We go to school. I mean, we're productive members of society otherwise. That one of the biggest things to look at here is also the confusion of the law. We're asking for, for this law to be passed so it can clear up the confusion. And speaking mm. to people every day, a lot of people don't even know they have the right to vote. Mm. They, they don't even register. And it is a way to suppress the vote. In a, in a neighborhood like Sandtown, over 65% of the black males, and I'm going to use this, black males, mm -hmm. are suffering as a result of their criminal record. They can't vote. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to the votership? And we all know that the money goes where the voters are. And look at the condition of Sandtown. Look at the condition of, of Gilmore. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's indicative. And I'm speaking on facts. These aren't opinions. This, these are facts. Mm -hmm. So what can people do uh, in reference to this? And uh, uh, are there some plans to have demonstrations, protests, well, of or, course. or rallies, or, or exactly what are you suggesting people do? Well, Communities United is very active along, along, um, along with the uh, Unlock the Vote Coalition. We're, we're a large group of organizations that have come together to support this bill. We, we've held rallies. But what's most important now is for people who live in these districts, in Anne Arundel, in Hartford, and in Montgomery County, to contact your delegate. Mm -hmm. You need to contact him and you need to tell him that this is an important issue. Mm -hmm. Okay? And ask him to vote for it. We need ground or roots. Or her. Or her, I'm sorry. <laughs> grassroots, we need grassroots okay. pressure. We mm -hmm. need to let them know that this, this does matter, mm -hmm. that it is on our radar, and it is important to us. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest tool we have at this point. Mm -hmm. When are you anticipating that this will be brought back up in front of the legislation to, uh, for uh, an override? When, th that's a very good and important question. What we, what we want everybody to realize is time is short. The session opens next week, and believe it or not, this is one of the bills that's slated for one of the uh, first to go up for override. Next Thursday, in Annapolis, Communities United and the Unlock the Vote Coalition is going to meet in Annapolis. We're going to let them know how we feel. We're going to let them know we're there, and we're going to let them, let them know that our voices need to be heard. This is an important issue, not only to us, but to Maryland mm -hmm. as well. Meet in Annapolis where? What time? We're going um, I think it's around 3.30. I'm not sure, I'm not sure the date and time, but if you check your social media, I'm sure you, you'll, you'll be notified. We're asking everybody to turn out. And we're asking everybody, send an email, make a phone call, leave a message, okay? Let them know this is important. Mm -hmm. Let the voices be heard, because we're in society. We're here, we're your neighbors, we're your friends, mm -hmm. we're your coworkers, we go to church with you, okay? Mm -hmm. We're normal people. And, and one, of the, one of the biggest things about this thing is, you shouldn't be judged on your criminal record. Mm -hmm. You go to court, you commit a criminal offense, you pay your time. The Division of Corrections says when you're ready and, and, and the lawful portion of your time has been served, and they return you to society. It's at that point that every right that you have as a citizen should be returned. Mm -hmm. You have to pay taxes. There was a war here in, in, in this country. Remember, this country was founded on the principle of taxation with representation. Well, ex-felons, ex are being taxed with no representation. Mm -hmm. Part of the greatest fear is, I believe, they know that with this vehicle to vote, that things will change. Because actually, an ex-felon without, without a vote, he can't vote against the laws that oppress him, that oppress his family, or, or with, with further his growth in society. Mm -hmm. It's totally unfair, it's unnecessary, and we need to overturn this veto. Mm -hmm. And one final thing, the delicate Corey, is that his name uh, well, that was in? And you know, I, I, please do forgive me. Um, Senator Joan Carter Conway was the original sponsor, mm -hmm. but we got to give big hats off to uh, the delegate in the 45th district, Corey McCray. Okay. Corey McCray is now leading the fight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Corey, Corey McCray is a power of example. Mm -hmm. He he has a checkered past. 
Look at him now. Mm -hmm. He's a perfect example of ex-felons when given the opportunity to return productively to society and to be a citizen. Okay? Okay, so any final thoughts? It's time for change. One of the greatest things, one of the greatest things that must happen and will happen soon is the vote is going to change things. The current legislature and the current political structure is counting on low votership. In the, in the African American communities. They're using this as a way to suppress the vote mm. so they can continue to do what it is they do in the fashion that they're doing. It's time for change. Well, you know, I mean, you brought that up, and I just, one, one last thing, even as you were saying that, I realized that in South Carolina, North Carolina, and other places, the Republican Party is making a concerted effort to take black voters off the rolls, is making a concerted effort to bar black voters from getting their franchise. Uh, so is this thing that Hogan is doing part of that national strategy for the Republican Party? I believe so, but I'm going to take the, I'm, I'm going to have the courage to say this. This is the new Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. Not only here in Maryland, but across the country. There's always been a campaign and a concerted effort to, to not allow the man of color, the black man, or once he was, as once he was called, the Negro, the opportunity to vote. And woman. And woman. <laughs> Ladies, <Okay>. please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to follow this. And hopefully you can come back later and let us know that it was successful. Sure. If uh, next Thursday in Annapolis, if anybody wants any information, please visit our website at communitiesunite.org. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll be posting. There's a media storm coming next week. We ask everybody to join in, show up, and let's get our vote back. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. And thank you for joining Rattle the Bars.